when we pray we think actually the god is uh, answering us but how to know whether it is god or satan did you understand the question right Your question is, uh, when you pray, you get answer, and uh, how do you know? Yes, yeah. brother. How do you know it is from God? The answer is from God. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is the type of prayer you are making? Are you doing according to the word of God? Is your prayer according to the word of God? Uh, actually, my question is huh. how to pray. How to pray? Uh, uh, out and then yeah. your, uh, yeah. Ah, he says uh, in Matthew. Yeah, actually, voice, that uh, voice uh, may not be heard, but uh, the camera hears everything. Ah, yeah, actually, that tingle. Uh, that tingle. Uh, uh, Matthew seven seven. Ah, kelengal apollo thungal ko kudu kapadum. Ask yes. and you will be given. Yeah. Seek and you will you will find. Yeah. So, uh, whether we should ask or we should let him decide for oh, us. Oh, we should ask. We should ask. So for, when we ask, uh, uh, whatever we get, uh, if it is not, we feel it's not. It it is not according to what you ask. Ah, uh, okay. yeah, it's bad. We don't know it. Okay, John? so when we ask, we don't know it. When yeah. we get, we feel it's not uh, good it's for not. us. Uh. So whether he gave us as a uh. gift or curse? Yeah. No, he never gives uh, gives curse. John fifteen. You can see, John fifteen speaks beautifully. He says, John fifteen seven. You can go for seven. He says, "If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you." The question you have to answer this question: If his words abide in you, what are his words? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and he has said it very clearly in verse five, five four, one and two: "I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch." that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit so his words his words his words have to be in you ah you stand there stand there stand there ah stand there his words have to be in you if you are abiding in his words how do we know okay how do you know what is the bible portion you are reading uh look I, I actually I asked for something and no, I got just, it. Just, now, so, now, now, now let us let us make an analysis. What is the Bible portion all the majority of the Christians read? Shall we say Psalms? Okay, actually, usually I. I read Psalms. You read Psalms. Sister, let's let's let us uh, let us face it squarely. The whole world in the whole world, Christians means people who read Psalms. Over ninety-five, I could say even I would say even boldly ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent Christians read Psalms. Agree, brother? So he says yes. He says yes. But did Jesus ask us to read Psalms? If you read Psalms, you are an Old Testament person, Moses, because grace and truth came through Jesus. John one seventeen. That means in the Psalms you have neither grace nor truth. in the entire old testament you don't have either grace or truth what is the truth the truth that sets you free john 8:32 the truth that takes you to heaven i am the way the truth and life and no one comes to the father except through me that means the word that takes you leads you to heaven for eternal life that alone is truth that truth is found only in the four gospels so if you don't read the four gospels you read psalms proverbs isaiah jeremiah you listen to all the old testament teachings then you have no truth your words you are not abiding in his words you are not uh, you are not uh, satisfying john 15:7 that means you, uh, you you will ask there won't be answer sometimes wrong answer devil will give okay you ask me more yeah yeah you understand so this is a so when you uh, when you read matthew mark luke john and start abiding in these words 
clearly you will know john 8 31 and 32 the jesus the jesus uh, in john john 8 31 32 this is one sentence john 8 31 and 32 then jesus said to those jews who believed him if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed if you abide in my word then come on and you shall know the truth only when you abide in his words his commandments in matthew mark luke john you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and when you are free when you are set free you know what to ask what not to ask and you will ask he will immediately answer you will certain times you may not even ask he will open the way and give you because you are abiding in his word if you follow the old testament like tithing if i give 10% of money they say in malachi 3 8 9 10 he will open the windows of heaven and give if you believe that lie that is not given to us that is an old testament old covenant if you believe that and you give 10% 10% every month actually you are cursed you are cursed every every money you give you are giving to devil the devil's kingdom so you will get more and more curse diseases will come husband and wife relationship will be strained every curse old testament curse will be there the gain you got through jesus gets lost when you start following the old testament and 22 first corinthian 16 22 someone who doesn't love jesus he is cursed he is cursed if anyone does not love the lord jesus christ let him be accursed let him be accursed so anybody who does not love that means anybody who follows the old testament commandment is a person who does not love jesus because he is disobeying jesus has said very clearly in luke 5 36 to 39 in three places he said do not mix the old with the new if you do that the new will tear the old and do not put the old wine in the in the new skin if you put the new wine in the old skin if you put the new wine in the old skin the wine skin will burst both will both will be lost the wine will be lost the wine skin will be lost put the new wine in the new wine skin both will be preserved he has given a clear warning you cannot mix the old testament commandments with the new testament life if you mix even one it's gone it's gone and whatever you ask you are already cursed as per first corinthians 16 22 you are already cursed for not obeying jesus commandment but you are obeying the old testament commandment you are cursed and in the cursed cur- as a cursed person do you think will your 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 prayers will be answered no no anybody who pays tithe anybody who believes that god lives in the churches in the building churches is a deceived person is a deceived person they all die young they all die young they got lots of problems diseases but when you are with jesus with the word of god that is matthew mark luke john john 10 10 says you get life that to life in abundance you won't get diseases you won't get diseases and you will do his work not reading the word alone not reading the gospels alone you have to do the gospel he says abide in my word abide you have to follow you have to go out teach his commandments the another thing you look at sister he said you be you and i have to follow his words only you have you have heard that then he has told the preachers in matthew 28 20 he says teach them whatever i have commanded you to teach he never said teach old testament he never said teach psalms he never said teach isaiah jeremiah no we are not supposed to teach directly from this if you do that we are violating his commandment and now you say how many churches teach the gospels how many churches teach the gospels speaking about jesus alone no there is none there is none they all teach 80 to 90% old testament as though the old testament is 100% alive and applicable but jesus said that is useless in john 6:63 it says he says the flesh profits nothing the words i speak are life and truth his his words alone are life and truth so now we know this our problem is we are not reading the gospel we are not following we simply follow what the pastor says they are totally controlled by a different spirit i can speak more on with verses they are controlled by a different spirit that's a devil second corinthians 11 verses 4 11 verses 4 if he comes 
preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. In Galatians 1, 6 to 8 also he says, there is a different, there is a different Jesus, there is a different gospel, that is a different spirit. Now, first let us read it. It speaks about receive a different spirit, then different gospel and also a different, another Jesus, another Jesus. So today, the church preaches another Jesus, a Jesus who has no power. If there is no signs and wonders, if people are not getting healed, if the dead people are not raised, demons are not cast out, sick people are not healed, then that is a different Jesus. If Jesus is with you, if the spirit of Jesus is in you, automatically people, will, everybody will be healing the sick. Not one, everybody will be healing. The kingdom, for the kingdom is not in the word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Kingdom of God is not in the word, but in the power. It has to. So, the different spirit, different Jesus means no healing will take place. In Matthew 12.28, Jesus says, I heal with the, I cast out the demons with the spirit of God. So, the kingdom is, kingdom has come upon you. So, if the kingdom of God has come upon you, that is Holy Spirit, then you cut the spirit of God, you will be casting out demons, you will be healing the sick. When that doesn't happen, that means that the, uh, that's a different Jesus. That is a false Jesus, false spirit and false gospel. They teach Old Testament, false gospel. God has never asked. You can see it in Galatians 1, 6, 7, 8. He is speaking very beautiful. He says in verse 6, I marvel that you are turning away from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. So pastors are all accursed. Pastors all are accursed because they are preaching a different gospel. So they also die of cancer. They, they, are, they You see uh, divorces in their family. It's all a curse because they are preaching a different gospel. And and But uh, that is it. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be a curse. Um, in other words, he is speaking about a spirit of error for you. We are of God. He who knows, God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Somebody who doesn't follow the gospel. In the previous two verses, he's explaining. He's explaining. Somebody who is not ready to listen to the true gospel, he has got a spirit of error. Spirit of truth. You have heard it in John 14, 16. Spirit of, when the spirit of truth comes, he leads you in all truth. John 16, 8. Opposite to spirit of truth. Spirit of truth is the spirit of Jesus. Truth is Jesus. The opposite to that is spirit of error. When somebody has the spirit of error, he will not agree to whatever that is being preached here. This is the true gospel. He will not. He will not. So you will know what, the, what spirit he has. You understand brother? Not many of them accept the true gospel. That's the news for you. Not many of them accept. That means... Today, the spirit of error has occupied the whole church. It's not the spirit of truth, spirit of error. You go and tell this gospel, this one, we will try to give the recording. Give that, they will say, no, no, he has got antichrist spirit. They will say straight away he has got antichrist spirit because he is telling, don't go to the false church. First they will say. Second they will say, he says, don't give offering. Third they will say, he says, don't give tithing. They will never ask whether offering is in the Bible, in the new covenant. They never ask whether tithing is allowed in the new covenant. If tithing is allowed, then the entire Old Testament has to be allowed. That means we have no God now. The, the sacrifice done on the cross is lost. If tithing is, is right or offerings, collecting offerings is right, if they say that, then cross is lost. Cross is lost. It's all a lie. So, but they want to believe the lie. That means they got a different spirit. Spirit of error. And the more you read the gospels, the spirit of truth teaches you. It teaches you in all that. John 16, 8, 
John 16, 13, 14. He teaches you into all truth, into all truth. Okay. Yeah. Any other question?